starting with phase zero, which is healthy, then going to phase one, nutritional immunosuppression, and then cachexia and wasting with marked immunosuppression, such as we see in patients with advanced AIDS and cancer. So again, since I've recently reviewed that information, I'm not going to review it here. I invite you to go to inflammationmastery.com forward slash antiviral to see that video for yourself. So now here in conclusion, I'll give you a quick overview of my antiviral protocol. It's founded upon viral pathophysiology. This is a four part easy to remember model because it's based on what a viral infection is. First, we have to encounter the virus and the virus has to enter into a host cell so that it can begin replication. So that's part number one, is focusing on virus acquisition and entry. Part number two focuses on inhibiting replication. Part number three of my protocol focuses in on supporting immune function. And then part number four is cellular and systemic support. Now some of those with certain nutrients, such as zinc, selenium, vitamin A, and vitamin D, we see some overlap there. This more complete model and more complete understanding provides the structure for a more complete and successful treatment plan. Nutritional needs are undeniable physiologic needs. These needs cannot be denied, although the medical profession does a great job of ignoring and sidelining the importance of this information. Ignoring reality does not change reality. We cannot bend reality to the needs of our pharmacocentric egos within the medical profession. Physiologic needs are best met physiologically, not pharmacologically. By virtue of their specific and targeted mechanisms of action, drugs can never provide all the benefits that nutrients can. Nutrients are always involved in multiple pathways and networks, and that's what enables nutrients to provide multiple benefits. In contrast, as I've already said, drugs and vaccines are always highly specific, not only to exact viruses, but actually even exact strains within that group of viruses. Point number eight here, I'm not against the employment of selected drugs when used alongside proper nutrition and biological interventions. In fact, when you look at my book, Antiviral Nutrition and Antiviral Strategies, I actually talk about using various drugs against viral infections, but always alongside a comprehensive diet and nutrition plan. So again, I am not against the employment of selected drugs. I am against the use of drugs when they are selected via medical ignorance and when they are selected for the sake of territoriality and profiteering rather than by appropriate selection based on what is in the best interest of patients. For reasons that span both ethics and scientific knowledge, I am against the compulsory drugging of healthy people, especially when such drugging is advocated by profiteers and bribed politicians. These are not reasons consistent with scientific training, medical ethics, and patient benefit. So again, as I said in 2014, the proof is in the panic. We need to use this new strategy against viral infections. The recent, recurrent, ongoing, repetitive, and predictable international health crises due to viral infections have made very clear the fact that the international community needs to use different strategies to combat these viral infections. The fact that these viral infection health crises exist in these modern times is prima facie evidence of the failure of current systems and the need not for new treatments within the same model, but for a new model better suited for international distribution, disease prevention, and broad spectrum effectiveness. The multifaceted model originally presented in 2014 in my book, Antiviral Strategies and Immune Nutrition, also published as Antiviral Nutrition as a digital ebook, gives us four main areas upon which we can safely, affordably, effectively, and rapidly focus our efforts. Number one, blocking viral acquisition and entry by targeting the virus directly. Number two, blocking viral replication with the use of specific nutrients, such as vitamin D, selenium, and acetylcysteine. Supporting immune function, again with nutrients such as acetylcysteine and glutamine, and supporting cellular and whole body health with nutrients such as coenzyme Q10. These interventions have proven effectiveness, low cost, international availability without the cost, delays, limited availability, and adverse effects of current medical treatments. So I encourage you to take a look at my various books, the least expensive of which is the Antiviral Nutrition eBook, which costs approximately $3 or 3 euros. And as I also mentioned at the start of this presentation, this nutrition protocol that I've outlined should be used in human clinical trials, and I'd be happy to support that. So again, in closure now, this has been Dr. Alex Vasquez on March 4th, 2020, 
talking about antiviral strategies, a quick outline, not a complete outline, but a quick outline, antiviral strategies for coronavirus, deciphering and deconstructing the phenomena of viral infections, insights that lead to better treatments. And again, I really encourage you, if you're interested in this topic, you need to see those other videos that I've posted at my website, inflammationmastery.com forward slash antiviral. Thank you very much for your time and attention.